Pittsburgh Steelers fans, might be good news on the injury front with TJ Watt and Najee Harris. I'm going to update you guys on that. We also got our own doctor, Dr. Karina Maharaja of Physical Therapy. She's going to be right here on the show talking about the differences and the injuries, the potentials of what it is. So if you were wondering what all it could come down to for both TJ Watt and Najee Harris to come back for the Steelers, We'll get into those details and what they could be. Also, my grades and analysis full for my my rewatch of everything uh, from the game on Sunday right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the, the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please hit the like button, button on this video if you enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content whenever we get time to create it. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Just pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with, pro- with promo code LOCKED ON. That's L O C K E D O N LOCKED ON. Just go to prizepicks.com, promo code LOCKED ON. All right, now that that's out of the way, I want to get to you guys about what we do know and what we don't know about Najee Harris and TJ Watt. Now, for TJ Watt, it was it was the fear was that he tore his pec, and that if he tore his pec, he'd be out for the season. But then we had Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk. We had CBS Sports coming out and say it's not a full tear; it's kind of a partial tear, and he could be back in four to six weeks. And then Adam Schefter said, if that if that is the case, then it's the case. But then Adam Schefter came out and said, well, the first read, well, the first uh, examination wasn't that. The second and third, there will be second and third uh, looks at it from doctors to see if it was a full tear, if it was a partial tear. They're still looking at that as well. It was also rumored that not. The Steelers are optimistic that Najee Harris could play even this week and that his injury wasn't a re-aggravation of the Liz Frank sprain um, as, as much. But there's also a lot of things being thrown around. We don't have anything definitive. So what I thought would be the best thing for you all so that I can get you guys information is, is for you to understand what are the different injuries that actually could be in play here because there's no for surefire information out there that I trust right now that says this this is definitely what Najee Harris or TJ Watt has. So I've got our, our friend Dr. Karina Maharaja. She's a doctor of physical therapy uh and she had her opinions. She's also a Steelers fan so she was very happy to come on the show. Uh but uh, I wanted you to listen to her uh, questions I ask her because she I think she does a really great job breaking down these injuries. Here's Dr. Kar- K- Karina Maharaja. Joining me today on the Locked On Steelers podcast, if you're a longtime listener, we've had Dr. Karina Maharaja on here before. We brought her back because this is serious injury news. Karina, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I wish I was coming back for a more exciting, less sad Steelers, you know, informative uh podcast but nonetheless i am happy to be here and excited to keep coming back now dr karina maharaj is is a doctor in physical therapy she's also a close friend of friend of mine uh but i often just text her like yo what's up with this what does this mean and she gives great uh great explanations of things so i wanted to bring her on this show to explain of course tj watt's injury so uh karina let's let's dive right into it with tj watt We're hearing rumors everywhere. Adam Schefter says it's a full tear, but they're getting second reviews. CBS says it's a partial tear, and it's not this. And everyone's just wondering, is this the whole year? Is this four to six weeks? Is this, like, what's happening? Nobody knows anything. But I guess what would be really helpful is to help Steelers fans understand what's the difference between the full tear and a partial tear or what other things could they be looking at here? Yeah, so right now, you know, we're getting a lot of information on the news, and I will say let's keep our fingers crossed until we have an official MRI, you know, report to read out. But at this point, we're getting some reports that there's a partial tear, um, which, you know, we would refer to that as a grade one or two tear. These lower grade tears, you can um, kind of rest, rehab, and get back to things within four to six weeks. If we're going into the um, information where they're saying it's a 
full thickness tear, those um, sort of tears really require surgery and then extensive, extensive therapy, especially at the level that TJ Watt is going to want to get back to. So I would say, you know, um, that would that would be a season ending injury if we have the full thickness tear. But again, fingers crossed for that grade one or two tear when it's small and we can just get him rehabbed for four to six weeks and out on the field again. Right. Now, I want to also point out that we did get some insight from Steelers reporters who were on site. I was not at right. the Steelers locker room Monday. I was I was doing my job at Pitt for the Post-Gazette. But T.J. Watt did show up in the locker room and they, people said he seemed chipper. He did say, I'm not talking today, guys. Sorry. But they said he seemed like in in good spirits, at, at least there. According to Adam Schefter, is that they, there is a first report that he's torn his pec, but I haven't seen that from anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And that maybe TJ Watt is just looking for his for a second report. But like, is, is this a thing where it's like it is like possible? Like, hey, a, a doctor missed this, and it's just that like, it's not a a grade three or four tear. It's more like a grade one or two tear that he can kind of play through and not need surgery for. Yeah. So depending on the tear and the doctor, right? So, you know, sometimes if you have a heart issue, sometimes you want to go to two or three different doctors to confirm what they're saying, but also see how they're going to treat it. Right. So um, in my, in my head, the reason he's going to multiple doctors is because he might want to see for the type of tear or injury that he has, what is, what are these different doctors doing treatment wise, surgery wise, if he needs it? And what are their protocols for post-op if he has to have surgery? In my mind, he's going to these multiple opinions to one, yes, confirm that everyone's reading the MRI the same way. But you know, when you have that image, it's going to be pretty obvious as to, you know, what's really going on. And I think everybody's initial report of what the injury is, uh, will be the same, but their treatment is going to be where the difference comes in, and that's probably why he's going for multiple opinions. Interesting. That's that. That's that. Yeah. Thank you for enlightening us on that, because I yeah. don't know what the heck's going on there. <laughs> uh, I, I am not a science person. I, I did political science and law. That was my expertise. I left that a to, different to y'all. Kind to of y'all. science, yeah. <laughs> if, if you could say. Um, <laughs> But okay, let's say let's say it is a partial tear and he is set to return in four to six weeks. Is that something still that even if he does rehab and hit like if it's a grade one or grade two tear there and it's something that they rehab, can he get back to 100 percent strength or is that still something that lingers with you for like the next several months and like something that you have to kind of keep a keep an eye on to for maybe it to get worse? Yeah. So, um, Chris, you mentioned that I had done the podcast before and I remember using this analogy then and I'll use it again. Your body, if you break or injure anything, think about a glass vase. You can break the vase and you can glue it back together and, you know, it will, you know, pretty much look the same. But there's always going to be that little bit of difference in it, right, when you're looking at it. And that's sort of how the human body works. Um, If you injure something, you know, the younger we are your your rate of recovery is better and it's great that tj watt is already so strong going into this situation because that helps his recovery that much more but i do think if it was a you know a smaller tear and he's taking four to six weeks um they are going to make sure that he is at the level he needs to be to play again and not get injured again but that being said it is possible where you know for somebody like me they say you you just need four to six weeks and you can do all the functions you need to do well with him being somebody that does so much of a higher level activity, they might say, well, we're going to keep you out for eight weeks Mm. or maybe seven weeks just to give you that one extra week of, you know, strengthening mobility, agility, stability training, and make sure that shoulder joint and pec muscle are where they need to be to get him back to his um, spot on the field. Because the way you tear a pec is by a real um, sort of like pushing mo- motion. Think about the motion okay. you do to to do a bench press. That's what he probably did on the field when he was pushing someone and he could feel that tear immediately. So mm. they need to make sure that they are reinforcing that muscle and joint so it doesn't happen again. Wow. That's a, and, and it's crazy because on that play, I remember he was getting really big push on yeah. the on a Bengals offensive tackle. That might have yeah. been what did it was that was that push there. That's great yeah. insight from you, from Karita. Thank you. I, I know everyone wants to hear about TJ, but we also got to ask you about Najee Harris. He left the game oh, yeah. with an apparent foot injury late in the game. He also ha- told told us and told me right to my face, hey, I had a Liz Frank sprain in early August. He said he spent about four weeks uh, out 
uh, from practicing because of that. But it seemed like the Steelers took every precaution with him. They didn't let him even practice. He just kind of jogged around for a bit. And then he went back out there, played a preseason game, and then played this game. When you when you hear that he's that he's got a foot injury and you saw him like grabbing for his foot at the end of the game there, is yeah. that something like maybe he did, you know, re-injure that as well? Or could it could it be something completely different and maybe it's not as as serious? Um, so what I'm thinking when I hear that he sprained it is that one, amazing that it's a sprain and not a break, because then he didn't need surgery. That means the the bones in that joint where he um was injured are a little bit more stable than what you would have if have if it really broke. So that's already a good sign. And they took him out for four weeks, really focusing on getting that joint strong, stable, which is huge. But I do think the rate for re-injury is higher. Again, it's like that glass vase. Once something's, you know, hurt or broken, the the anatomy of it is always just going to be maybe a little bit weaker, not as good as it was prior. So it is possible that he did, you know, just re-injure that same area. Mm, okay. And here's another, my, my last question to you about, about this. With Najee, is it, po- is it something where with a Liz Frank, like you could really rush this and risk uh, you know, r- risk that break actually happening because I think that's where a lot of Steelers fans are at is that like, listen, Najee is vital to this offense. You know, he scored the only touchdown that they had in, in, in this past yeah. game offensively. You know, is this something where you could afford to rush it or something that maybe you should back off on and just say, hey, let's let's let that foot heal. Yeah. So what I'll say is that area of your foot where you would get a Liz Frank uh, fracture. It's so many bones and ligaments coming together to think mm. about what for, what forms the arch of your foot, basically. And, you know, all those little, little muscles and bones, you have to think how hard it is to directly strengthen that one little tendon or that one little piece of musculature. So um, I do think that they need to spend some extra time this time around making sure that this joint is reinforced. But I do think that, um, you know, if if they say there's no need for surgery, there's a good chance he can get back out there. But it will take probably another four to six weeks of rehabilitation if he did hurt the same exact area. So the Steelers fans need to hope that it wasn't the same exact area. Because here's the other yeah. thing. I'm not sure if we ever got clarification on which foot he originally yeah. injured because the Steelers were very mums the word. Like he disappeared in a practice. We didn't see it. We were just like, we heard that his foot was stepped on, but we yeah. never got clarification until he told us after the fact. And I went yeah. back to the video. He didn't say which foot. So it's possible this was a different foot. It's possible this is just bad luck and both his feet got yeah. damaged. It's also possible maybe it's another, a different part of his foot. But either way, yeah, yeah. if you're a Steelers fan, you're hoping it's not in the same area of a Liz Frank of the original foot that got injured. Thank you for yeah. that insight, Karina. That, that, that's Absolutely. something that we can learn a lot from. Well, Karina, it's been so great to do another show with you here in the Locked on Steelers podcast. Yes, on not happy circumstances, but I always <laughs> love talking to my friend. Um and, and if if you're if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, why is she a doctor wearing a Steelers jersey? It's because she grew up in Pittsburgh and she's a Steelers fan. So get over it. Um, anyway, exactly. <laughs> Four one two for life, no matter where I live. <laughs> there, there you go, uh, Doctor Karina. Could you please let the good people here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast know where they can find you, follow you, and get more insights from you? Yes, if you want to follow me on Instagram, um, I am at K Maharaja, or you can look up Karina Maharaja, like it's written here. Um, I am also on TikTok at Karina Maharaja, and Chris pointed out to me that I should probably make a Twitter. So I will be getting to that and hopefully be back and letting you guys know what my Twitter is. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Dr. Karina. We got more for you here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Stay tuned. We've got a lot to talk about grades coming out from this game after my film watching. We'll be talking about that very soon. So there you have it. There's Karina's words. Now, full disclosure, we recorded that before a lot of the news came out. And as I was as I was sitting here, um, uh, literally, I, like while I'm doing this, this second record here after we've done that, that, inter- that interview, uh, a report came out from Aaron Wilson of Pro Football Network that uh, it's it's thought that T.J. Watt's injury could just be about five weeks. So it could be one of those grade one or grade two tears that Karina Maharaja, Dr. Karina Maharaja was talking about. So all that to be said, 
this is the best version of this news you could probably get for the Steelers, considering it was thought that both Najee Harris and TJ Watt were going to be lost. We're going to get to my grade soon. We've, we've talked enough about injuries. I want to get to actual back to analysis about the, the game itself. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, we've got to talk to you guys about our friends at Prize Picks. Now, if you don't remember Prize Picks, Prize Picks, as I said at the top of the show, is a new daily fantasy game that everyone needs to start playing right now. If you're big into fantasy sports, this is a way to get your daily fix by selecting an individual player's projections and just make it a simple decision. Will they get more or less? of a certain stat, whether it's yards, touchdown, points. And because the thing is, this isn't just football. This is basketball. This is, this is the NBA. This is the NHL. This is Major League Baseball. This is college sports. There's prize picks goes all over the place. And it's really easy to do. All you do is look at it, look, look at, look at a league, say, I want two to five players, pick, pick them and say, I have the best beat on them and say more or less for each player. You, you put in your money and you can win up to 10 times your money that you put down in prize picks just by picking more or less on up to uh, on anywhere between two to five players. And you're not competing against other people. You're just competing against the number that prize picks set. So if you think prize picks has a good, bad number on a player, go pick, go pick that number. Prize picks includes again, NFL, NBA, major league baseball, NHL, college sports, and so much more. Download the prize picks act or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked on. So don't forget to use that promo code locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Uh, right, right on prizepicks.com. We're also brought to you today by Athletic Greens. Our partner ha has a product that I use every day. It's called Athletic Greens AG1 because I didn't have time to prepare all my meals. I sometimes wouldn't get the proper nutrients throughout the day. But AG1 is a simple drink that takes just a few seconds to make, and it, it covers a lot of the nutrients. It helps with your gut health, more energy, an optimized immune system. And as an asthmatic, it's really helped me breathe a lot easier. And that was especially big throughout the summer when, the, when my allergies could have been going crazy. Now, I've been on AG1 for months, and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It's not super heavy to gulp down. It's just a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each and every morning. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, um, your, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system by getting yourself some AG1 from Athletic Greens. And it's it's simple. One scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements. Just just find a way to look out your health, look out for your health and it's cost less than $3 a day and contains less than 1 gram of sugar and supports better sleep quality. To make it to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free 1-year supply of immune support support uh, supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So with all that being said, let's get to talking back about this game. Now I, I do want to, you know, just make sure we, we're on the same page here. There's no clear sign that again, that, that Najee Harris is going to play this week or that, TJ Watt is definitely going to uh going going to be back in five weeks or six weeks. A lot of this is just is just playing playing it by ear, it's just taking it one step at a, at a time. But you have to wait for what the doctor says. But the interesting thing that I wanted to do with Dr. Karina was get the information, get the facts that we could have at our at our uh at our disposal because um we needed to see exactly what we were working with here as far as what kind of a tear because i saw it could be a partial tear a whole tear and i'm sitting here thinking like if it's a whole tear could it still work could the you know could he still play on a whole tear because he's because uh we heard from like, like i said in that interview uh you know i was hearing from brian batko our man my man at the pittsburgh post gazette and we were hearing all over the place that hey you know what um, you know, he, he seemed kind of chipper in the locker room, so he wasn't down on himself and he didn't speak, but maybe there's a chance that he's not done for the year. All that, all that being said, I'm just saying that there is a chance there. And I think that's pretty good news for Steelers fans, but all right, let's get into the grades because that's where I think that, uh, everyone, everyone wants to see something. Now I'm going to, uh, show you guys how I'm doing grades. I'm not doing numbers. I'm not doing letters. I'm doing a system that if you're a longtime follower of me, even before I was on this show, 
I used to do a thing called Carter's War Room for DK Pittsburgh Sports when I used to work there. And a lot of people seem to like this this rubric and all it, all it would be was be a simple way. I went back to like old school decals on helmets for how uh, players would get decals. You know, if you played football and so you did something really good, you get a decal like sticker, put it on your helmet. And like at the end of the year, you could see all the stars, all the skulls. And I played for the Auto Dice Dragons. We had fireballs. So I went with a sim similar rubric. So here's how it's going to work each and every day. If you're on YouTube, I put a sim, I put it up here. If you're listening, just, just uh, hang in there with me. I'll explain all the grades. There's six different types of grades you can get. There's for good, for good grades, there's one star, two star and three star. And if there's no limit on who, on how many players can earn and earn those stars each week. And we'll try to tally these week, week after week going into the season. So at the end of the season, we have a way to grade just how great these guys were uh, as a whole. So for one stars, that means you had a really good play on top of like a good day, like a good day. You didn't make any crucial mistakes. If, if for two stars, you had a really great play on top of a good, of a good day. And that's, and that's, uh, and, and so you, you were a big contributor to the team. A three star is like an elite performance all time. You know, you'll see by based off of the players that I, that I give three stars today. Now we, for bad plays, we have what I call skulls and skulls are just me. I just the same, the same thing for stars, just in reverse for bad plays. One skull means you had a bad play, but it wasn't really bad and you just never redeemed yourself. So like, for example, um, you know, if you look back, back at this game, uh, let's say like Mr. Trubisky had some bad plays, but there were some moments that he redeemed himself. So he didn't get that one skull. I'll go over that later. If you had two, if I give you a two skull grade, that means you just had a bad game as a whole, you know, not irredeemable, but like, Hey, this, the, you cost this team big time. Three skulls is all time. Terrible. You cost this team. You are a big reason why the team lost the game, or it's ridiculously amazing that they found a way to win with you on the team. So imagine those things. So let's get into the grades that I have. Uh, right, right now, just off the top. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with the stars because that right now seems to be. Uh, I think that, that this is an easy way, and we'll start with the easy one. Um, because we'll go if we go with, um, if if we go with the the, the bigger stars, the three star guys, the guys who were the superstars, you'll get a sense of this. So obviously, three star guys in this game: T.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Alex Highsmith. Now, T.J. Watt. What did did get injured at the end there? But I mean, the guy was a force of nature as he always was. Even when he wasn't getting a sack, he got a sack and interception. He was he was making plays in the backfield. Had another tackle for loss. He was a big part of what was putting together what the Steelers were doing there. Mika Fitzpatrick. I said yesterday he was the player of the game. He was the superstar. Um, you saw that you saw what he had in a pick six, blocked an extra point, led the team with fourteen tackles, and was an enforcer all over the field. My my last three star of the game was Alex Highsmith three sacks in this game found a way to impact the game in so many different ways was all over the field really helped in the run defense he put it all together and showed why the Steelers believe believe in him and didn't try to go get someone else to uh to, re to replace him at any point in time so those are your three star guys your two star guys uh, that were Cam Hayward Cameron Sutton and Pat Fryermuth. so again great plays from some of these guys and and a really good game on top of that Cam Sutton had an interception and had a fourth down breakup where he peeled off his man. He wasn't even supposed to be there, and he stopped Jamar Chase from catching what could have been a game, a potential game-winning touchdown pass um, in, a, in a big way. So big-time play from Cameron Sutton there. He did have a hold. If To be honest, if he wasn't called for the, the defensive holding calls, there was one that I thought was legitimate. The second one that really saved the Bengals in the, at the end of the game. Um, and kept their hopes alive. I thought that one was really bogus, um, especially with some of the holding calls the Bengals cornerbacks were getting. But all in all, I felt Cam Sutton played at a very high level, and it was that chemistry of the cornerbacks that really helped the Steelers' secondary confuse uh, Joe Burrow. And finally, my last two-star guy, Pat Fryermuth. I mean, Pat Fryermuth was just was was just beasting out there. He was blocking well. He was catching the ball. He was he was moving after the catch. To me, he was the one offensive player that I think stood out the most in this game. And I mean. I think it just it just showed when when you looked at it, he led the team with five catches for 75 yards on 10 targets um, and, and he found ways to make plays even when there wasn't a whole lot there. So that's my you know, th those are the top two sets of grades there. Um, and I think that I think that you're getting the feel for it. But there the good thing about these grades is there was nobody in the three skull territory and nobody in the two skull territory. And I know that some of you guys are going to say, well, Chris, what about the offensive line? Weren't they really bad? Weren't they absolutely terrible? Don't go that far with them. There were some one, one skull guys in this game. We'll get to them and the one star guys in this game 
and why I, I picked certain ones. Devin Bush is going to come up in this because I did a full read watch of this game, looked at some of the film, and man, he looked even better than I gave him credit for. We'll go over him and other guys that made the one stars and the one skull categories in my grades in just a minute here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But first, we got to talk to you guys about betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest, the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including the NFL season. This well underway. Week one is over with. All the first games are in. So now it's time. You got to feel for who's good and who's not. The Seahawks pulled off a crazy upset over, over uh, Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. So get yourself ready. Get to bet online. Learn all the odds and the ends to get yourself ready for football season. Also, with baseball season heading to the playoffs soon, you'll want to get on on that action. Again, bet online, your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action when you visit bet online where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're finishing up our week one grades of the Steelers. And again, I went over my my three star, my two star, my uh, my two star grades. And again, just to look for the rubrics for those who are watching on YouTube so you can see it. Uh, this is uh, the breakdown. Three stars, elite performance. Like, you know, you keep that up. You're going to be an all pro. Uh, two stars, great play, good day. Kind of like you keep that up. You'll be in the Pro Bowl. One star is like, hey, you keep that up. You'll you'll get a lot of respect from fans and you'll be you, you'll you'll build your yourself as with a good reputation for the team and of course skulls bad three star three skulls terrible like irredeemably bad two skulls you had a bad game you got to bounce back from one skull you made a bad play you never really bounced back from it so that to keep it simple now here's the thing we're going to start with our one stars here because i did three stars and two stars our one star guys here there's a lot of them because this and i think this was what won the steelers the game when i went back and looked at it i didn't see too many guys making these really boneheaded mistakes like we've seen in the past chase claypool i put him on this list and i, I think i said this yesterday but nick farabaugh of, of, of pittsburgh sports now and steelersnow.com pointed out there was a play on the on the steelers last drive where claypool helped deontay johnson be on the line of scrimmage and figure out hey you got to be on the line of scrimmage so that we don't get an illegal formation and cost ourselves with a 10 second penalty in this final drive because they were out of timeouts and they needed to spike to put themselves in and keep themselves in field goal range that on top of two really good good catches in traffic i thought he did a good job he also led the steelers in rushing i thought he deserved a one star him and deontay johnson also deontay johnson i mean you go back and look at that catch i'm bringing it off the camera because i gotta go oh he looked like that that was ridiculous he made a ridiculous ridiculous catch that to me is like at the end of the year that should get talked about like the Odell Beckham Jr. catch it won't because Deontay Johnson just doesn't appear, appear to have that name that people want to recognize nationally but Steelers fans you know it is and you better keep that highlight in your minds whenever you're thinking about it because a lot of people said hey he doesn't earn wide receiver one he doesn't deserve wide receiver one money well that was a wide receiver one play. That was wide receiver one, one play. Uh, so great job by him there. Um, but back to my one stars, the one offensive line, and I thought I had a really, really, really good game when I look back at it was Chikuma Core for held down his spot, didn't give up too much pressure, and was the best person I saw in the run game. There wasn't much to be had with the run game, but I thought that he he was able to open things up. I gave Najee Harris a one star grade because of his touchdown, and he kept fighting throughout the game until he was hurt, and he really wasn't getting a whole lot of looks. There was really only one time last year. There were there, there was like two or three times a game where I'd be like, "Oh man, that was a bad read or a bad decision," uh, you know, from Najee Harris. There was really only one time where I saw that in this game. Now. To get to the one other one star guys, the linebackers, Devin Bush and Miles Jack, they didn't get two stars because neither of them made the explosive plays like Cam Sutton's interception, you know, or, um, you know, make of his Patrick, you know, the stuff that got them the multiple stars, but both of them were solid all game long. Miles Jack had 10 tackles. Devin Bush, I believe, had four tackles in this game. Um, uh, no, five tackles, excuse me. And he scraped along the line of scrimmage a lot. So if you're looking, if you're looking back at that game, I know a lot of people wanted to blame him when things started to go wrong. That certainly was should not be the case. Devin Bush had a really good game. Other one star guys, Zach Gentry, he had the he had the really nice catch and run. He had two catches for 40 yards. That screen, he showed he can get moving and he's a big guy to bring down. Levi Wallace, he had some really good coverage on Jamar Chase in the front pylon uh, for a big stop in the end zone. Uh, Chris Wormley didn't have 
a great game, but he had a good game. He was he was out there for quite some for quite some time and was able to actually go out there and not be a liability in the run game, which was his biggest weakness last year. Played 41 snaps and had three tackles and a tackle for loss. I thought he actually played well. Other guys here, my last one star guys, Akella Witherspoon. He had that interception. Did, only reason I didn't give him more is because Jamar Chase did kind of get the pick at him a little bit. And, you know, he had a touchdown on at the end of the game. And there were times he was getting beat. But again, I ain't too mad at Akella Witherspoon, a guy that they picked up for a, what a fifth round pick uh, in, a, in a trade to take on a guy who was a top five pick for, for the Cincinnati Bengals and, and is their their next superstar big player that's gonna that's gonna carry their offense moving forward. So I think that that was a, that was a big one there. Arthur Mallette, my last one star guy, he had that sack in the end, which was really big. He was never a true liability in coverage. I thought throughout the game, I thought he was putting himself in solid position. He, he also played 60 total snaps in this game according to pro or no 60 percent of the snaps excuse me um uh oh no no was this 60 i think this is correct 60 snaps here uh oh no no sorry 19 snaps this is percentages uh, i apologize for that he played 19 snaps and chris warmly played 41 snaps. that is correct anyways point being um no, Martha Mullet played 60 snaps. Wow, this is crazy. I'm sorry. I'm looking at their charts. It's just really discombobulated here. Uh, but uh, Arthur Mullet played 60 snaps, and you never saw him really get picked on for a slot corner. That's pretty good. And he had the sack there. So, okay, now we're bringing that down so you can see my face, and you can you can probably get the sense of how stupefied I looked when I'm re trying to read these uh, PFF stats as I'm doing the show um, and managing these graphics. But that being said, there were some one one skull guys. The biggest, there were only two that I really saw when I went back at. It. I thought Kevin Dotson held his own for the most part. I thought Mason Cole held his own for the most part. I thought that James Daniels held his own for the most part. And the biggest thing I'll say about the offensive line. They did not bl run block well, but they pass protected their butts off. They kept Mitch Trubisky clean for, for most of the game. The only time he was sacked was a play where he ran out of bounds. And honestly, when I, I still haven't seen an angle that shows him stepping out where the, the official marked him. I thought he got past the first or the, the, the line of scrimmage. It should have been counted for a run for a gain, but the Steelers got a lot of bad spots in this game. So, um, you know, maybe it was just another in that long line of things. So that being said, I, I don't think the offensive line really performed that poorly. The two guys I gave one skulls to were Dan Moore Jr. He had a really bad holding call. And the, I, I didn't want to give him a bad game. I, I, I struggled with this because he was up against Trey Hendrickson and he didn't give up a single sack. In fact, Trey Hendrickson was like almost a no show. You didn't feel his presence in this game. So I didn't want to judge him too harshly, but. That, that one holding call was a big setback on an important drive, and I didn't feel like he did enough in this game to redeem that to avoid the skull. Again, we're, we're, it's the first week. It, we're, do, we're doing our grades. We're trying to get into the swing of this thing. The other guy, Robert Spillane, and it's, this isn't a knock on Robert Spillane. He just got dragged for a, a first down by Joe Burrow, um, and I, there was never a point where I saw him stepping up and making the kind of play that I thought redeemed it. I thought that he wasn't a liability for the Steelers, but again, just one mistake – that I didn't think he had a chance to redeem it because he also left the game with an injury, an apparent eye injury. You hope that he's going to be all right. But there's our grading system. So we hope that you enjoyed our, our grades. It's something we're going to try to do every week, and we're trying to kind of keep track of as the season goes along so that you guys can kind of see how the grading process grades out and what our grades are on the Locked On Steelers podcast at the end of the season uh, for how guys are doing. So with that being said, we hope that you enjoyed the Steelers grades here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Mike Tomlin talks today, Tuesday, uh, giving giving us all the insight as far as what's going on. I'm sure we probably will get a, 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 better, a better word or a word period from the Steelers about the TJ Watt situation and the Najee Harris situation, or Mike Tomlin could just – play the smoke screen factor and be like, I don't know. No, we'll, we'll see. There's no official word yet. Uh, and we'll see when the Steelers, the Steelers, you know, released their first practice report or their first injury report on Wednesday, how that plays out. So a lot of that will be kept up to date, but we have a lot of other things to, to, to cover. We'll be talking with other guests this week, right here on the lockdown Steelers podcast. Thanks so much for checking us out here on the show. We appreciate everyone. Let us know what you thought of Dr. Karina and, and what her analysis was. If that helped you understand, let us know also if you enjoyed the grading segment and if you disagreed or agreed 
with any of my grades out there. Thanks again for checking us out. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Follow this show, the Locked On Steelers podcast, on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you enjoyed the video on YouTube, hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday comments. If you want to help the show out, go on Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars with the positive comment. Do both at the same time, and you get a special shout out at the end of the show. Thanks again, everyone. We're back on Wednesday talking more about your Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you.